Hello, and welcome to the Thyroid Warrior Podcast. I'm Ebony, and I'm here as your wellness facilitator. I'm going to be sharing my experiences in managing Hashimoto's disease, and I really hope that it'll help you on your personal journey. Keep in mind, however, this does not substitute as medical advice. It is only for your information and motivational purposes only. Now, let's get started. Hello, everyone. I want to begin the process of going over why patient portals are so important. And last week, we discussed care coordination and why it is so important to make sure that we as patients are put at the forefront of care. And what's most important now is to understand how that can also come together and work well from the perspective of trying to make sure that we're managing our health as best as possible. And one of the tools that we can potentially use for our toolbox is our patient portal. And basically, a patient portal is an online application that gives you, the patient, the ability to talk to your healthcare provider, whether it's your physician or a front desk staff member or a medical assistant, your physical therapist, your massage therapist, even depending on if they're working within a health system or a social worker, for example. So that's really the basic definition of what a patient portal is. And basically, if your provider offers a patient portal, what will happen is you will need to access that patient portal, whether whether it is online or through an app that you can find on your phone. And you'll need to walk through the process of signing up for it. Once you've signed up for this patient portal, what you're going to notice is that you will be able to see all of the data, for the most part, related to your visits, meaning your clinic visit. So when you go to the doctor, that's considered an outpatient visit, or if you're admitted to the hospital. Now, one caveat that I do want to share about patient portals is that sometimes, depending on the state that you're in, and I'm speaking specifically to the United States here, is when we have patient portals as it relates to children and teenagers, that can sometimes become a sticky subject. So, for example, where I live, Basically, from an infant to 12, the parent has access to the patient's portal. From 13 up, that is when the patient themselves is the only person responsible for their patient portal. Now, you can be a guarantor, meaning you're the person financially responsible for that patient account, but you can't actually look at the data in there. So that can a lot of times create a significant amount of conflict for the parent and the healthcare provider. And in that instance, or even in the case where you have an elderly patient or, you know, you're a caretaker for your parent, and let's say they're not good at managing their patient portal, you can serve as what's called a patient proxy. And that allows you the ability to sign up as a secondary almost to be able to essentially attach yourself to that person's patient portal so that you can help them manage their care. So I will leave those two seemingly sticky situations there, but this is how we're tying in the 21st Century Cures Act that I talked about on a former podcast episode. Now, this is where this is really going to come into play. So, 
What I mean by that is because of the 21st Century Cures Act, C-U-R-E-S, now we as patients, for the most part, again, this depends on the state that you are in, you can now see your doctor's notes. And prior to this, if you were using a patient portal, a lot of your results also would tend to come to you. However, some providers had the option prior to the 21st Century Cures Act to basically hold the result so that they could see it and then have a conversation with you about it. Now, in many cases, most results come to you directly. So sometimes you can see your results of a test procedure or what have you before your doctor does. And I'm saying that to you because a lot of times that can cause a lot of anxiety for us as the patient when we're seeing something and we don't often understand what we're seeing. So it's really important to have a good conversation with your doctor. And in the event that you do see a result, sometimes what you'll see in the result note itself is your, you may be seeing this before your physician does. So I want to make sure that you have that understanding up front. But here is where that patient portal also comes into play is if you do, in fact, for example, let's say you get your thyroid antibody levels back and they're really high. Now, if you're newly diagnosed, you may not understand what that means. So for you, you could be freaking out, especially when we start looking online about all of the potential things that this lab result could mean, you're now scared. However, rather than you being scared about it, you could easily send your healthcare provider a note related to that test result. Or in the event of what happened to me, I am talking to my dermatologist and we are working on my skin and making sure that nothing is going on and we're really and truly working on establishing a routine and treating ingrown hairs. That is, I'm sure, more than you ever wanted to know. But it is a common occurrence, especially if you shave or if you wax, regardless of the area that you shave or wax. But I digress. So she prescribed me a cream. And what I was able to do, she actually provided me with two creams. I went to the pharmacy, I picked up one, but I noticed that I did not have the other one. I gave it a few days because sometimes these things take time. And then I messaged her and I said, hi, I didn't see the second prescription at the pharmacy. Did I misunderstand what you said during the visit when you were calling in two prescriptions? Or is something actually going on? And the medical assistant was able to look up my message and my prescription. And we found out that my insurance did not cover that medication outright. And that I would need something called a pre-authorization. So in that case, what I did, which I'll talk about that in another podcast episode, But I was able to go on something called GoodRx to see how much would that cream be if I paid for it, quote unquote, out of pocket rather than going through my insurance. So I was able to have a conversation with her because I hadn't heard from them in a few days. And we very easily and quickly figured out that alternative. I was able to go to the store. I picked up my cream and now I can test it out. So that when I see her in a few weeks, I'll have used it and can compare in contrast where my skin was today versus where it is two weeks from now. So that's an example of the type of communication that you can have with your provider 
when you utilize a patient portal. Now, the other thing that I want to highlight related to using your patient portal was that example as well. Now, a lot of times, what's really important to note is that even if you have a doctor, you may love him or her or them, and they're busy. They're really busy. What will happen is they will either have a nurse or medical assistant attached to their inbox so that way they can monitor the messages that come in and out and can respond to them if appropriate. And that way, you as the patient are still getting the care and communication that you need and that will also reduce the amount of times you as a patient have to call the practice. So speaking of this, the last thing that I want to talk about today is understanding how the communication channels could potentially work. And I say that because a lot of times when you're going to a provider, you really like them. Sometimes they may start using a different electronic medical record. They may get bought out, for example, by another crack. There are so many things that can happen. But what's really important at the end of the day is that you and your provider establish a norm related to how you communicate with each other. And what I mean by that is some providers are totally okay with patients emailing them, some are not. But what I want to caution you about is that when it comes to email, you always want to be concerned with if I send sensitive information related to me as a patient and a data breach occurs, meaning someone hacked into the system, if you put any specific identifying data that identifies you as the patient in said email, or let's say you didn't send it encrypted, you didn't send it secure, because why would you? That can bring about a lot of potential issues for the provider and the healthcare system that they work for, especially if they just start forwarding that information on. And that information that you are sharing with them is not a part of your legal medical record. So that is another reason why you want to be very cautious about email and why it is also important to keep things in your patient portal. Now, the other thing is establishing a norm as it relates to calling your practice. Now, for me, I don't have a problem leaving a message for my provider, but sometimes it can get really busy and it may take a few days for that provider to call you back, which is another reason why utilizing your patient portal can be really helpful because even if your provider doesn't get to that message, a nurse or medical assistant may be able to respond or they, on their behalf and can give you a more updated estimate of when that provider can actually respond to you. So I shared a lot in this episode today, but basically, I really want to encourage you to use your patient portals in addition to be able to communicate back and forth with your provider you also have the ability to look at lab values. You can make appointments. You can access different information related to scheduling vaccinations or scheduling any visit that with a person on your care team if your healthcare system allows you to do that. And you can also get connected to research studies and depending on what additional apps and or types of information that your health system shares with your patient portal, you can manage a lot, even being able to request a prescription refilled. I do it all the time. So this was a jam-packed episode, but I want to make sure that you have as much information as possible. So with that, 
I am super excited about everything that you have going on and really and truly getting the tools in your toolbox to be successful as a patient. But also, I just want to give you a few reminders. My digital health journal is now available. You can head to joyfulevening.com, navigate to the shop, and you'll be able to purchase that. You can also go to Sula Beauty Co. S O U L A Beauty Co. dot com, and you'll be able to see it there. And I'm very excited because on Black Friday I will be launching my subscription box at Sula Beauty Co. And that is going to have four to five of my handmade body products, along with recipe collections as well as workouts for the month. So it's really bringing all of the things that I love to do to support you all from a health perspective and we're putting it in one package and I'm very excited to be able to create a community where I'll be able to give a lot of trainings as well than bringing guest experts and finally if you have been wanting to work one-on-one with me now until December 31st is your opportunity to book your time with me. You can head to joyfulevenue.com forward slash services to fill out the questionnaire and book your services to work with me one-on-one because as of January 1st, 2022, many of the services that I currently have, they're going away and you will only be able to work with me from either the capacity of personal training and or my VIP days. Otherwise, that's it. So I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that. Again, joyfulevenue.com for a slash services. And you will definitely want to take advantage of the current pricing and what I have going on right now. But with that, we are going to enjoy the rest of our week. And to close out talking a lot about how to get these tools in your toolbox, we're going to talk about that thing I mentioned earlier in this episode, which is GoodRx and other apps that I use to stay on top of my health. So with that, friends, be happy, be whole, and be well. Take care. Okay, thyroid warriors, get out there and take things one step Remember, reflect on your triumphs, know that you are doing your best, and do what you need to do in order to be well. I would absolutely love it if you